Hi everyone, it's Sunday the 31st of May 2015 and Happy International Commodore Amiga Day! Yes, so today is International Commodore Amiga Day and here at Let's Talk Retro we just love our Commodore Amigas. As you can see I've got a Commodore Amiga 600 today. Um, back in the day, like most people, I suppose I had a Commodore Amiga 500. Um, they were probably the most common one back uh, so sort of like the late 80s, early 90s. So we thought we could let today pass without saying a few words about the Commodore Amiga and talking about our memories a little bit. So to kick us off, it's over to James. Happy International Amiga Day, everybody. Here we have my beloved Amiga 500 Batman pack. Um, I got this originally in 1989 for Christmas. Uh, it was the best Christmas ever. For those of you who don't know, the, the Batman pack, it comes with obviously the Batman game uh, that came in like a small cardboard box inside the, uh, the cardboard box, uh, the main computer box. Uh, there was also New Zealand Story, which is a bit of a quirky game I think it's by Taito, and uh, you're a little Kiwi um, in New Zealand uh, trying, to, uh, trying to rescue your friends who have been captured. There's also uh, F-18 Interceptor, which is um, sort of one of the first flight simulators I've ever played. Um, quite difficult, but lots and lots of fun. There was a handy cheat so you could skip uh, levels if you didn't want to play for it right from the start. Um, after the uh, the second mission, I remember that you would uh, start getting attacked by other people. Of course, you had missiles and uh, cannons that you could use. Um, you could land on the aircraft carrier, or you could try to. That was quite difficult. Uh, you had to put your adjuster hook down, I think it was called, and that would catch on to the uh, little ropey thing on the uh, aircraft character to help slow you down. I always found that really difficult, but managed it. Um, Deluxe Paint 2, everyone's probably heard of that. Um, that was a very creative um, painting program back in the day on the Amiga. Lots of people probably started out um, their sort of careers using that before they went on to Photoshop and things like that. I just also want to mention one of my favourite games of all time. Uh, this is Chase HQ, um, of course, on the Amiga. And uh, this is a game that was released by um, Taito in uh, 1998. Um, it's an arcade racing game with um, a bit of a twist. Um, this is a uh, home, home computer convert of a um, very popular arcade game. Um, you play the role of a police officer... Um, He's called Tony Gibson. Uh, he's a member of the Chase Special Investigation Department. Uh, he's got a partner called Raymond. I um, can't remember his surname, but um, remember he's called Raymond. Um, so you chase after fleeing criminals in high-speed high pursuits. Chase HQ runs on a time limit. Um, so at the start of uh, each level, you get shown what criminal you, you've got to chase. Um, so you've got to race down the highway and uh, try and find that, that criminal. You get various choices of uh, routes on this game. Um, well, I say it's choices that you get left or right. Um, and some say certain routes are longer than others. And of course, all this is done under a time limit. Um, so when you, get, uh, when you catch up with your... Uh, the criminal you're trying to chase um, what you have to do is uh, ram them as hard as you can and as many times as you can before the timer runs out and um, luckily when you get near them you get a, an increased amount of time and um, you just have to ram them off the road and eventually when their car um, blows up or uh, you know goes wrong you uh, get out your car and you arrest them Thanks for that, James. Uh, yeah, Chase HQ, good game. I remember that. I played that a lot back in the day. And uh, yeah, I think that's a good choice for one of your favourite games on the system. Uh, but I've got some memories of my own, so uh, let's take a look at those. So 
So when I think about the Commodore Amiga, this is one of the first things that pops into my head, this picture of this um, familiar start-up screen or boot-up screen. Once you turned your Commodore Amiga on and it loaded up, it loaded up this picture of this familiar pixelated hand holding a uh, Commodore Amiga Workbench floppy disk. And from this point, you just put your disk or whatever program or game you wanted to load into the floppy drive. And after a series of clunks and clicks and a few moments, your uh, game or program would usually load. So the second thing I always remember about the Commodore Amiga is this, and that is Workbench. And uh, this came packaged with every Commodore Amiga on a 3.5 inch floppy disk. And you just pop this in and uh, this came up and it was more like a, a Windows environment really for like the Commodore Amiga which had a, and had a host of sort of utilities that you could use. Uh, I never spent a huge amount of time in this because I just wanted to play games. So yes, these are 3.5 inch floppy disks. This is what the software for the Commodore Amiga came on. These are for the Amiga Extras, Amiga Basic, and Amiga Workbench software. I'm sure most of you that remember the Amiga from back of the day know this. This one's mainly for other younger viewers that haven't really ever seen a 3.5 inch floppy disk. So yes, I'm sure quite a lot of Commodore Amiga users from back in the day will remember sitting looking at this screen and watching those little zeros fill up in the boxes. And uh, yeah, this is Xcopy, which is a bit of software that could be used to copy from disk to disk if you had a couple of drives, or I think, I think if I remember rightly, you could even switch disks, but it was just easier to have uh, two drives so you could just copy straight from one to the other. So this is my Amiga uh, magazine of choice, uh, Amiga format. I used to uh, always buy this one. Uh, there were other magazines out there as well, but for some reason I preferred this one and bought this one more than the others. Pictured here we have issue number 67, and uh, obviously a Christmas edition. Uh, Amiga format usually came with at least two cover discs, but this one being Christmas, I was obviously got three. And they'd come packed with game demos, sometimes if you're lucky a full game, and usually some sort of software, so like a utility, uh, which is a full package as well. And uh, it was quite good back in the day to get that because you couldn't just download demos off the internet like you could today because hardly anybody had access to the internet, if they, if anyone. And uh, so to be able to get older demos and to get older games to uh, try out before you uh, actually bought them and read the reviews in the magazine as well because you obviously have no internet, you couldn't get reviews online either. And so, yeah, the, uh, the magazines back then were uh, important to us uh, Amiga users. It's uh, going to be a very, very big hit. So yes, the uh, uh, demo scene was a big part of the Commodore Amiga. Um, there was teams of uh, programmers all over the place that used to get together to uh, make these demos that just showed off the graphics and their programming skills. And uh, the music was a big part of it as well. I remember people used to place adverts in the uh, Amiga magazines selling public domain software along with these demos. And I remember I used to just pick out like a few of these a month and uh, send off a check and then you get a disc pack in the post with all these demos on. And I think back uh, in the early 90s when these demos were around, I was really into sort of dance music then, and uh, so I used to really enjoy these demos.
But for me, the Commodore Amiga was all about gaming, and there's just too many great games to mention them all. But I was a big fan of the uh, Monkey Island uh, series that you can see playing here. Um, I really loved those games. They were funny. They were just new and intuitive. You wanted to click everywhere to see what would happen uh, if you tried different combinations with things. Um, and they were just, you know, along with, uh, I think there was one called Cruise for the Corpse and uh, there was an Indiana Jones adventure game. Really sort of uh, got me into point and click adventure games. But uh, finally, the uh, my all time favourite on the Commodore Amiga was Speedball 2 by the Bitmap Brothers. You can't go wrong with that game, it's just so much fun. I uh, spent hours and hours and hours playing that and I had the Commodore Amiga. So, uh, yeah, great memories. So that was just a few of our memories of the Commodore Amiga. I'm sure you maybe got your own memories. Um, if you'd like to share them with us, then drop them in the comments box down below. Uh, we'd love to read them and see what your thoughts were on the Commodore Amiga. Maybe you had an ST. Ooh. Uh, but anyway, till next time, guys, have fun and keep it retro.